and in fact you know i just want to start with a you know let's say a personal experience uh, to be very frank uh, uh, you know uh, just in the last, uh, last few minutes i was going through you know a flux of memory and uh, i remember you know getting into the area of hydrogen about 9 10 years ago and and that was through the development of fuel cell uh, at csr at that time and you know i spent a quite a bit of time that early you know part of the career contemplating about the hydrogen economy how it will look like and you know particularly in the indian context um and to be very frank you know that was a very limited view at that point uh, because it was being looked at from you know simply electrochemistry efficient electrochemistry point of view and but slowly you know the whole thing dawned on me um literally in a sense you know what an incredible uh, you know uh, fuel hydrogen is uh, which you know obviously through its uh, you know sector coupling and as well as the deep uh, decarbonization potential uh, it can literally rewrite the uh, the way the whole economy works the you know especially the energy fabric of an any economy right um so obviously you know a lot of people you know a lot of think tanks have given a, a you know a detailed thought on this uh, but personally i would say you know more and more uh, we thought about this problem uh, you know more, more and more we realized that it's not an easy problem to solve right especially given uh, you know the role of the incumbent technologies what they have been playing so far in the industry uh, obviously we have a, you know modern uh, our you know modern system you know uh, we have to thank this technology we have they have brought us where we are today obviously given their issues of the carbonization and you know whole emission issue uh, we have gathered here to see you know what are the alternatives for the you know the future uh, i would say you know uh, at least particularly this session is quite challenging because the kind of you know the sectors we are looking at uh, you know they are very important sectors from a, any economy point of view uh, and you know um, hydrogen obviously has a very important role to play in the sector right uh, as we know the electricity you know uh, and obviously uh, we are relying you know heavily on our um, you know on a re renewable potential as a country uh, but the electricity can only go so far as a, the entire you know energy uh let's say energy power of uh, you know what a country consumes right um i mean we can push it to 40 50% obviously you know with different mechanism uh, but at some point uh, you know the 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 fuels um like hydrogen uh, which can literally uh, let's say replace many of the fossil uh, uh, you know sources uh, uh, directly um uh we we you know particularly at least from the refineries and the sectors we operate uh, i think uh, you know the challenge obviously in a country like india is our you know uh, the the cost challenge right um, and obviously as an economy what we have available and what we do not um, you know obviously for example we do not have a carbon uh, credit or penalties available you know let's say for which uh, uh, which has been helping all this other economies uh, you know which have Uh, moved into the hydrogen economy you know in in last uh, you know listen last decade or so uh, especially japan europe obviously europe is trying to take the lead in terms of the technology leadership as well uh, we we as a country have a very unique uh, challenge you know we have to achieve all these objectives of the decarbonization but at a cost points which are very very different Uh, believe me you know when we have our discussions <laughs> with many of the technology partners we are talking to uh, they, they 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 just go you know blank when we talk about the you know the cost numbers which are so different right i mean there are factors uh, you know you know there are factors different than uh, what they are used to see right um, but the advantage what we have is obviously the market size right i mean the the the, the let's say the capital utilization right i mean because uh, with a small capital uh, you know we can utilize it more uh, you know given a large population so that uh, you know capital utilization is is much more beneficial to us as an economy as compared to many of those other but um, the you know at the same time we have to realize that you know many of this uh, uh, road map development that uh, the technology development has happened uh, from a point of view of um, uh you know let's say majority of that from the japanese point of view and also european point of view and they may not be directly translatable to us right so we have to you know literally uh, spend a, a good amount of time to understand and you know focus on how uh, given our context you know our own problems how uh, you know some of the solutions will be applicable to us right uh, whether you take from the technology point of view whether you take from the investment point of view 
uh, whether you take obviously from the decarbonation point of view, right? I mean, our own aims in the you know COP21 and you know our own commitment to the COP21 allows us you know a certain level of uh, you know, a certain level of uh, a certain path of uh, decarbonation, right? Um, so taking all of that uh, in, in cognizance, you know, taking all of that view together, um, we will have to think uh, slightly differently, right? Uh, at least in the absence of uh, those, uh, uh, you know, fiscal, non-fiscal incentives, you know, what we know has to be there uh, for this technology, uh, you know, to be viable, uh, at least in the early transitional period. And the transitional period is is the most critical one in this. So I would say, you know, the next decade, the immediate decade where we are right now today is the most critical component of it. Uh, we have to work on multiple technologies right from a market, uh, you know, demand point of view. Um, and whether all of this, uh, uh, you know, whether all of this transition happens on the back of the policy or industry themselves, uh, as, uh, you know, Dr. Aruna was talking about, you know, because uh, you will be blocked from the market, you know, you would not be allowed to do, you know, businesses. Um, and, and, and you know, why to go even, you know, uh, to that uh, end, right? I mean, uh, your your shareholders themselves, right? I mean, you would not have uh, uh, access to the investment at some point, right? Uh, so there are multiple factors and industry is very seriously looking at it. But the challenge for us, uh, you know, I mean, at least I can say from the refinery point of view, even our digital business point of view, how do we meet this uh, cost challenge while, you know, moving on this path, right? Uh, so uh, I think we can touch upon this. Uh, I would take a pause here and then obviously we can, you know, dig deeper. You already know, you know, our commitment to what our chairman has uh, made, you know, through, you know, $10 billion of investment. Uh, and, you know, one thing is for sure, we have to look at the entire value chain, right? From the, you know, the photons to all the video molecules, right? Uh, and that's why it is a quite challenge, but exciting as well, because you are able to rewrite, let's say the economic, I mean, the energy fabric uh, of the economy itself, right? So, uh, you know, we, we can take up, uh, you know, uh, more detailed question on this, uh, but I'll take a pause, uh, you know, for, to hear 